Hello everybody, how are you doing? My name is Kaylee Allen and welcome to my channel. And today I would like to go through my top five favorite large houseplants of not necessarily 2018, but at least of autumn of this year, because who knows, it may change. So I do have quite a few large houseplants. I don't know if I have more than the average person or not. Please let me know in the comments below if you have many large houseplants, because I feel like a lot of videos I see on YouTube or people sharing their houseplants, but they're normally significantly smaller than some of mine. As I say, they're not they're not too large really because I can move them around. I know some people have plants that you just, you can't move them, that's it. If you water them, you go to them, they ain't coming to you. But mine are just, just on the verge of being able to move them around, so it's not too bad for me. Okay, so in at number five, my first houseplant is the Calathea Velvet Touch. I don't know if you can see this in the frame, so I'm gonna have to move him a little bit, but he is, oh my goodness. He is glorious. Can you still see me? Hopefully. Um, I don't know if the mic's gonna pick me up though. He is absolutely beautiful. I've had him a little while. How long have I had this guy? Since like July, maybe. Uh, he was this big when I got him. I kind of cheated a bit. I got a, quite a big Calathea. He's absolutely gorgeous. His leaves feel like real velvet and I'm not kidding. If you ever have an opportunity, if you don't already own this plant, to touch this plant, please do. Um, it's There's no difference between this and just actual velvet. It's amazing. Obviously the undersides of the leaves are still beautiful and purple, but he's just beautiful. Um, let me just put him back. Does have a proper name for this Calathea, but I cannot for life of me pronounce the name. So bang, there's the name. Um, but I know him to be the Velvet Touch. That's more of the common name for him. Uh, he lives in my living room. He gives me no problems. He has a couple of marks on his leaves, but honestly that was the, pr they were just the present when I got him. Since then his leaves are absolutely immaculate. He's got some marks here and I think it's when the leaf was rolled up. Somebody must have like squished it in the shop. I don't know. Um, and it's got some creases there off that. One or two little marks on him, but for the most part, he's doing pretty well, to be honest with you. Care tips. I treat this guy pretty much the same as any of my other Calatheas. The only difference with this Calathea is I don't actually mist him. Because of its velvet leaves, I don't think he would like misting. If you own this plant and you do mist it, please let me know if you do. Um, because I'm pretty sure I got told on the internet not to mist him because of the texture of his leaves and he wouldn't like it. So I don't mist him, he does absolutely fine. He's sat in about 60% humidity anyway, so he's just golden. Again, I water him the same way that I would water any other Calathea that I have. And he is just beautiful, as you can probably tell. I'm very proud of him. But that said, he is still my number five. So without further ado, I will move on. So the house plan sitting at spot number four is the one thing I talked about in my um, in my trio star uh, magic star variegation video uh, was this bad boy. This is the large trio star that I told you I couldn't really move. Um, I see if I can move back with him. Give me a moment. There. Can you see him now? He's really big. This is why I can't move my say he. I mean, it's a she. I mean. It's sometimes a she, it's sometimes a he. I mean, I, is anyone else like that? Like you aim to give them a gender and then they just change depending on your mood. Um, but this is absolutely beautiful. I'm considering if anyone, I don't know if you can pick this up on camera, but there is a section here that I'm actually considering trimming uh, and propagating this one little node because I don't know, the, the other leaves fall in a certain formation. And I think it's just weird to have this little extra bit sticking up top. So I might trim that down and propagate it and possibly do a giveaway on it because who doesn't want a trio star? Especially one that's come from this absolute beast. So look at her, she's beautiful. She also lives in my living room, uh, quite close to the window actually, just because she's variegated and she needs quite a bit of light. But she's very happy. She doesn't have a single, and I'm very proud of this, she does not have a single brown tip anywhere on her. And I don't understand why, because this one here, I don't know if you can tell on camera, this one has a couple of brown tips, but this one, it's literally, it's immaculate. Every leaf is immaculate. There is not one brown tip. And I'm not exaggerating at all. Every single tip, perfect. But this still sits at my number four. I don't know why it sits at my number four. I think it could be because I have two of them. Obviously you can see here, this is the one you may have seen in another video. This is my smaller trio star. Yeah, I don't really know why it's sat at number four. Maybe it's because I have two of them that I've just moved her down on my favorites list. I don't really know. I don't have a reason for that, but she is literally perfect. Not a brown leaf, sexy, not crispy. 
Okay, so let's move on to plant that takes the third place on my list of top houseplants. So if you haven't seen my uh, video on why is your trio star not variegated, uh, this is not a trio star. It may look very, very similar. If I just move this a second to the plant next to it, it looks very, very similar to a Calathea trio star, but it is not. It is the Calathea magic star and it is number three on my list. I don't really know why it's number three. I think part of the reason is it's just so bushy. Um, I find it to be a lot more luscious and thick than the trio star that I have, or really both of the trio star that I have. Um, I don't know. It's just, it doesn't get a lot of press, I guess, because a lot of time it is mislabeled as a trio star and it isn't. Um, and I think as soon as people find that out, they just they'd lose a bit of love for it, but I love it. And I did know it was a magic star when I bought it. Um, I did my research beforehand. It was very, very difficult to figure out what it was because he, it kind of looked like a trio star, but it didn't. And uh, He's pretty awesome. He does have a lot of brown tips though. And I honestly think it's the soil he's sat in because I find that this particular soil in this particular plant, I haven't repotted this plant since I got him, this particular soil seems to stay extremely wet. So I really, honestly, I'm watering this plant like once a month and that's for a Calathea and he's getting plenty of light and I'm watering once a month. And I actually think the soil is what's causing the problem because he's getting care that's no different to any of my other Calathea. And yet I am getting a lot of brown tips on him. Not every single leaf, but quite a lot of them. And I'm honestly just thinking maybe that's the problem. So at some point I intend to try and replace the soil with something he might prefer. But yes, that is my number three spot uh, taken by this beautiful magic star. As I say, I love him. I love how bushy it is. It's in this beautiful basket here from Ikea that I bought. I mean, the basket is way bigger than the pot, let me tell you. But he's not actually planted in there. He's just, he just sits in there like that and just looks cool and bushy. So that's him. That is number three. So where are we at now? My number two houseplant. So my houseplant that takes second place in my favorite large houseplants that I own is the Calathea Orbifolia. Now this one does not look, oh my God, I cannot get me and this plant in the frame very well. I'm very sorry, um, but really it's all about the plants. So, you know, I, I ain't offended, don't worry. So this plant, as you may see, here. This plant has actually been through the wars a little bit and honestly this is the most difficult Calathea that I own by a long shot. Like it's ridiculous how much more difficult this is. I've never really had a problem with brown tips until I went on holiday. I think I went on holiday about a week or two weeks before I did the plant tour video on my channel. So a little while ago anyway. And during that time I had someone look after my plants, but they never looked after house plants before, let alone Calathea. I left her some instructions. I left her the moisture probe that I own that I used to water all my plants. She did her best, but I think at some points this hasn't quite been watered as often as it maybe should have been. And as a result, as the leaves have grown in, it's, we just haven't, I mean, the leaf doesn't even feel like it's developed properly close to the corners. It's a shame because obviously that's it now, that's the leaves, but what can you do? It's still very, very beautiful. And I'm sure when the new leaves come in, they will be gorgeous. But at the minute she does have some crispiness on quite a few of the leaves, but it's, it's only like little pieces. I don't know if you can tell there's slight bits around the edge of the leaves. Now, before you tell me it's humidity, I know it isn't humidity. Uh, my living room is at a constant state of between, I think it's 60 and 70% humidity, so it's high. To be fair, on holiday, I was actually genuinely quite stressed. I couldn't really relax because I thought, oh my God, are my plants gonna be okay? Like, are they all gonna die? Are they gonna be crispy? But they were fine, so that's her. Can you see her in the frame? No. I'm doing a terrible job of this. I am gonna do another uh, houseplant tour at some point, maybe when it gets to winter. So maybe December, I might do another one. Just a very quick one though. It won't be as long as the first one. That was just, that didn't need to be that long. So when I do do a new plant tour, you will see these properly and I will make sure you get a proper view of these. Which brings me to the top plant on my list. And I think if you've seen my houseplant tour at all, I think you know where I'm going with this one. So without further ado, I'll show you my number one. So my number one favorite large house plant that I own is my beautiful Alocasia and also known as Elephant Ear. And I call this guy Big Al. If you've seen my house plant tour video, you will have seen this guy before. Personally, I think he is absolutely beautiful. Just very recently, he has a new leaf coming in and I am unbelievably happy about that. He's gorgeous. He is sat in this planter, the one I, uh, the one that I bought him in, but he's just beautiful. Honestly, I got him for such a good price. I got this guy for 25 English pounds. And honestly, for a plant of this 
size and stature. I'm just, I'm in love with him. I don't know if you can get an idea of how large he is. Let me try and move back with him one second. Can you see him now? <laughs> He's very large. This is just the worst video for large houseplants. I'm gonna put him down now because I can't just stand here and hold him while I talk. Two minutes. So that was my top five favorite large houseplants. As I say, I do think I have a bit of a thing for large houseplants. I don't know what that is. I think for me personally, I like houseplants because I like the lush green type of houseplants with the exception of my alocasia. But generally I like a plant to fill up a space. I would rather have less plants and have large ones and really like make a statement than have like loads of ones kind of lined up. Um, at the minute I am starting to get smaller houseplants, that said. Uh, I've bought, I think, about four new house plans recently, and some of them are very small. So I think that's it for this video. Um, I will leave the names, uh, kind of like a top five down below of the house plans that I've mentioned here. Um, if you'd like to see a care video on any of these plans, please let me know. The only reason I haven't done any care tip videos yet is because I kind of don't know what to start with. Do I start with the trio style? Do I start with an orbifoliate? Like, I don't, there's so many different plants that I have. I don't really know where to start. Like I would love to do an alocasia care video because I don't really see many of those knocking about the internet. Unless it's the alocasia poly, which everyone seems to own, which I actually don't have. Well, that's it for this video. Thank you very, very much for watching. I hope I didn't go on too long. I hope you got a good view of the plants. I can't tell yet. I haven't edited yet. So I don't know how much of the plants you could see there. Now I have to put all of these house plants back downstairs one by one. There's also a link down below to my Instagram, but my Instagram is Let's Wet My Plants for anything plant related. I also have a personal Instagram. If you wish to follow that, you're more than welcome to. I will leave that also down below in the video description. Thanks very much for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.